This is Carl, the Emerald Tree Boa, one of the most beautiful snakes on the planet, in my opinion. One of the snakes that really got me into reptiles really, really hardcore when I was younger. I've talked about it. The book Living Snakes of the World by Mertens actually had an Emerald Tree Boa on the cover, and I was obsessed with them. Now, most people think that Emerald Tree Boas are pretty aggressive. They are a little bit defensive. They have the largest teeth of any non-venomous snake. So Jessica's gonna go ahead and make a rainforest today, which is where these guys are from, South America in the rainforest. Beautiful, so the first thing we're gonna have to do is get Carl off of here. I'm going to just see if I can do it really gently. Again, a lot of people think these guys are kind of mean animals. The truth is they're usually pretty good. They're not really a handling animal. I'm going to need a little snake hook just to make sure. Because like I've mentioned in the past, now is not the time to get bit by a snake with my treatment, right? I don't want to have anything. Else. So I'm going to just very gently keep his head going one way. And then I'm going to just kind of unravel him over these trees. It's a pretty big snake. This snake is probably, you know, pushing close to six foot in length. But of course, they always stay coiled up in one spot. That's going to be a little tricky getting out. There's no doubt about that. I have to just kind of act a little bit like a branch. My arm is now the branch. And we just got this last little bit of tail wrapped around here. You gotta be really gentle with these guys when you're unwrapping because you don't want to break any spines or anything like that. And they really hang on tight. But as you can see, an emerald tree boa, although not a handling snake, and I never suggest people handling arboreal snakes like emerald tree boas and green tree pythons on a regular basis, but to take them out once in a while is not a problem. And look at how stunning that snake is. Be holding an emerald tree boa like this, it's literally like a dream come true. But I tell you what, these guys have some pretty big teeth. And I'm actually going to want to show you those teeth. So I'm going to need a little help from Mike. That's really close to your arm, Mr. Brown. Just hold the snake. And what I'm going to do is super gently, I'm going to just get him up here by the neck. And I'm not going to grab him hard. I'm just going to grab him really lightly because I want you guys to see these teeth. Oh. You can really see. Look at the size of those teeth right there. I mean, those are giant. The largest teeth of any non-venomous snake. I mean, those have to be pushing a half inch plus. And trust me, getting bit by something like would this would not be something I'd want to do. Like I said, you can see Carl, even after doing that, it's completely fine. I can touch his head. I mean, it's an absolutely beautiful snake. So we have a holding tub over here. We're going to put Carl in. We're redoing his enclosure to make this into a beautiful rainforest. And this will be a perfect holding bend for him. He'll just wrap up on this rod right here and get comfortable in no time. And he'll be fine. We'll check back on him, make sure he's really good. But uh, now it's up to Jessica to beautify that enclosure. I've got to figure out what plants I want to use in Carl's enclosure. I've tried so many different plants in there and he kills all of them. We're going to try try the ZZ plant. It's pretty sturdy. He might knock it over, but it's super resilient. So even if he knocks it over, it'll probably still keep growing. I have two spots that are up in the corners of the cages that need like something either that's going to hang or vine up. Palatheas and the philodendron micans. So those will look nice in the corners. We need a couple just more like ground cover plants. Let's try this calathea too, because it's got really nice big leaves on it. These are rabbit's foot ferns and they're super easy to propagate. You just snip off the little rhizomes, put it in the dirt, and it'll grow. We got all our plants. Lori actually went and got us a couple of bromeliads. Use this pretty purple one here. What we have to do before we can get started planting is this is like a swamp. So we're going to pull probably about 75% of it out. Put in new ABG because this is what it looked like when it went in there. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll get our plants in there and hope Carl doesn't destroy them. To a problem when you're doing a bioactive enclosure you usually want to use like a screen and we did i used a weed be barrier because we ran out of screen and it has disintegrated so this is going to be a huge mess to clean up no <laughs> no down you go so what seems to be the problem is rj is knocking over all my bin and i need to get down my aisle look at him mm. you need me to put it back then yeah. I know. Oh. Yeah, that feels great on the back. Oh god, you're getting heavy. This is the best part. <laughs> Make sure he doesn't climb on the cart. <sighs> ah. RJ, relax, buddy. Relax. Still just such a majestic animal. I mean, there's something about him. You know, it's funny. I've actually had a handful of emerald tree boas throughout my life. Carl is just absolutely stunning, of course. And then there's Amazon basins that have much more white on them and unbelievably beautiful as well. Hopefully we can get some of those when we get across the street for sure. The interesting thing about emerald tree boas, as babies, they're born red and they go through what they call an octogenic color change. Now, why are they born red and then turn green as they get older? When they're born live babies, typically they're born on the ground. Four to six months, 
their life, they're going to spend most of their time closer to the ground because they're going to be eating things that are on the ground more like lizards and maybe small rodents. As they get older, of course, they're going to switch their diet more to birds. When they're red, they blend in well with all the foliage, all the flowering, and all the reds that are in the bottom of the canopy. And as they get older, anywhere from four to ten months, they start to go through that oxygenic color change to green. And then they start moving up into the canopy, up in the trees, and then they're way up top in that canopy, and that green actually blends them in with the canopy. And of course, that's the ambush hunters that they are when a bird comes by. They grab them. Ultimately, why they have such large teeth is because when a bird flies by, they have to be able to snag them. Miss that bird. It might be another month before another opportunity for a bird to come by. Have screen. If not, I'm gonna have to run to Ace Furniture. <laughs> Tell me if it's perfect. Nice. <laughs> Maybe aren't the best scissors for this. These guys are boas and they have live young, live little babies. They're so absolutely adorable. They're incredible. And they can have anywhere from as low as six babies all the way up into the mid teens. Now that's a huge litter of babies and they're born pretty big. And like I mentioned, red and beautiful. Unlike the green tree pythons, that could be born red or yellow, majority of the time yellow. These guys really always are born red. And then they go through that change. And it's interesting because there's always a little bit of green on them when they're babies. And then the green kind of expands and the red retracts over time. That can happen anywhere. Sometimes I've seen it three, four months. Sometimes it's been eight or 10 months before they go through that color change. But it's just incredible. I mean, they're just such amazing, amazing animals. Oh, I just poked myself in the finger. Is it bad? No. I've been having not good luck with like doing this stuff. Slicing my finger with razor blades or poking myself with scissors. This is what it looked like before. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't <laughs> it? So this one, I'm actually gonna try mixing a couple other things into the ABG. I'm gonna see if I can get something chunky, like either some big chunky cocoa choir, maybe even a little bit of peat moss, see if we can keep it from getting super swampy this time. Yeah guys, so since Brian obviously can't lift a lot of weight, we gotta get RJ when he comes out for his walks and stuff. <laughs> but when he comes out for his walk, he does like to cause a little bit of havoc, so we gotta get him back in his spawn. He's been out all day, he's had plenty of time to walk around. So, 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 he knocked over all the tubs. Your tubs? Oh, he's shedding a lot. It's so you gotta put him back. Alligator. He's so heavy. He's gotta be like a hundred and some pounds. Sorry, that's my fault. She spoils him a lot. This is the baby. So I found some uh, like chunky cocoa stuff. That's gonna just like help to the water to just go through the soil, hopefully, and not just stick in the soil. Let's see here. I really like this. It's a philodendron lichen. It's really similar to like the heart-shaped philodendron. It grows like very fast and it'll root two things. So you can kind of see it's got little nodes there. Those will turn into aerial roots that attach to different things in the cage. Both of these actually are a couple of my favorite terrarium plants. I'm just gonna leave it in its pot. I don't want to put it too far into the dirt so it can have more room to drain out. I'm gonna plant some other plants in front of this though to disguise the pot. I think I'm gonna add one more tall plant right here just to kind of fill in this. this is another one that has crazy roots. Oh wow, yeah. Whoa. Emerald tree boas were a big part of me being just absolutely enthralled with snakes when I was younger. When I got that book that I told you about that was on the cover, there was actually a emerald tree boa, and then inside there was a picture of a baby which was red. And I tell you what, if you could wear out an image looking at it, I would have wore that image out. I literally looked at those two photos, I mean thousands and thousands of hours. I used to literally just prop it up, sit in a chair, listen to music, and just stare at that picture. One day, never realizing that I was going to have an opportunity to work with a beautiful animal like Carl. And today, his upgrade is going to be happening. Okay. Oh, you want to learn? <laughs> <laughs> so this one, like I was saying earlier, the philodendron mycons, it climbs up and holds on to stuff really well. So I'm going to plant this at the bottom, at the base of this, and see if it'll climb up the tree. What did you call that one? Philodendron mycons. What? Philodendron mike. What? <laughs> Phil philodendron mycons. Yes. Yep, yep. Okay. So make sure that these get watered mm -hmm. and they don't die up in the corners, please. 
Yeah. Uh, we didn't really talk about it, but when uh, our CEO Chuck was here the other day, he actually helped me and he taught me all about this ROS, so it's reverse osmosis system. Osmosis? That's it, yeah. Basically what happens is we used to get the refillable jugs and we'd have to like fill our mister systems and then climb up a ladder and fill the foggers and all that stuff. It is all right through the hose system and main water source. So then it comes out basically the TDS or total dissolved solids. It comes out zero. So now our lines won't get plugged up. I can just turn this on. Then we get a giant bucket full of fresh clean water that we use for all that other stuff and on top of it this is a waistline so it produces a lot of bad water unfortunately and then we can take that water fill up buckets water plants with it so that way they get all the minerals and the, all the good stuff from that too so let's turn on the mister for jets so she can water everything from there down here all the way and then i also have it all the way over to dolly our green tree by salt and pepper so that goes there but all i have to do is right here is push this button uh mister's around right now so let's go see what it does that and that's it <laughs> easy as that right great job Thanks. so jessica finished up on the enclosure i'm excited to see it i always like to wait till she's done to actually see what she did oh gosh yeah that is absolutely incredible that's like a little miniature rainforest and it kind of shows you a little bit why they go through those octogenic color change down here we've got this color more of a red color that's where the emerald tree player babies are going to hang out maybe here or here waiting for prey from the ground and then of course as it gets bigger you're going to get more canopy up here and that's when they're going to go up top so this looks great jessica it looks so beautiful it looks so much better than it did yeah. oh my I god a revamp for so long. oh my god but it looks <laughs> I love the little pops of plants up top. The whole thing looks absolutely incredible. So let's go ahead and uh, get Carl in there and see how he likes it. Okay, Carl, ready? Go back into your beautiful new rainforest. Wow. Look at how good he looks. I mean, I love the way that the, just the pops of color just make him look even more vibrant. But again, you can see how in the rainforest, if you're down there, how these guys would just blend in so much, right? Just like a leaf. They're so amazing animals. Super excited. Good job, Jessica. Yeah, this is uh. Great. Oh my God, he looks so good. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, there's a playlist that you can watch all kinds of videos. You can also hit that subscription button. It would mean a lot to me. Also, hit that like button while you're down there. Have a wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember... Oh! <laughs> do I have to do this? Rock Pie Bunch, you're still not that calm. <laughs>